So Amazon is doing primary care now. I just want to review really quick what that actually entails, what services they have, something that you absolutely have to be aware of, like giant red flag. Please, if you're going to use this, make sure to like listen up to all, we'll talk about it first. Thing you do not do not pass go around that's super sketchy about this as well as where this kind of is and what it's doing. Also, I would just like to say really quick yesterday, in case you didn't see our live stream, literally yesterday, we had a live stream where we talked about Amazon's clinic where they're having like, I think they called it Amazon clinic. And you can go and do little health appointments via the app. And I said, they're going to move into the primary care space. And I pretty much described this entire thing. I think they were listening because literally overnight they heard the idea. They were like, wow, Liz, great idea. Let's actually do that and launched an entire platform for the next day they came out with this. So I do take full responsibility. I am sorry. Uh, I'm waiting for my check. Obviously they owe me a lot of money because I gave them the idea <laughs> and it's really creepy that it came out the next day. Okay. So what are we looking at here today? Okay. So we have Amazon. It's called one medical. It's all over the apps. You've probably seen it. You cannot enter the Amazon space today without being like bombarded with information about it. This is primary care owned and run by Amazon through this company called one medical who Amazon owns. Basically what it is, is you buy into, uh, an agreement with them. It's $144 right now, like for their introductory price. It is essentially paying to be in their own healthcare system, right? This is just like, if you were to go and you were like plugged into, I don't know, I live by, I live in Pennsylvania. So if I was like part of the university of Pennsylvania's medical system, I could go to their, maybe their different campuses. I could be seen by all their people. Amazon is doing that now for primary care. Okay. We're going to go over how you pay for it and kind of like who it is for just kind of like a review in case you, this popped up and you were like, what even is this? I've Googled it a lot because I was very intrigued and impressed that they implemented my whole plan overnight and we'll go through it. But first of all, okay. First thing that you immediately need to know if you are considering this is there are some weird terms and conditions. Okay. So let me show you. So let's say you went in here and you were going to go and join. You're like, okay, great. $144, which by the way, it doesn't cover, you still have to pay for all your visits. It does go through insurance. We'll look at that in a second. This is kind of like the cost to even get into this ecosystem. Uh, you have to still pay that. And there it says like terms apply, right? So you go and you click and you're like, Oh, terms, what, but what are the terms? Well, these are the terms and they're weird. Okay, friends. So we come here. These are their membership terms of service. Uh, be, I was nerding out. And I was like, I'm going to read these. <laughs> Didn't get very far before I found red flags. If you decide you want to go with this service, right? Please, please, please read this paragraph. You agree that disputes between you and one life will be resolved by binding individual arbitration unless you opt out in accordance with the dispute resolution process described in section 12 below, blah, blah, blah. And if you're like, what does that even mean? They're talking about lawsuits here, my friends. Okay. So it's saying if you enter into an agreement with us and you decide to be one of our patients and you're paying this fee, you cannot sue us if anything goes wrong. Instead, you have to, so normally if you were suing us, you would take us to the court, you would file a lawsuit, and you would, or maybe be able to enter, like if a bunch of people were suing you, like a like class action type of thing, can't do that. If you are going against, if you're using this service, unless you opt out because they require you to use binding arbitration, which is basically you have a medical issue, right? Something happens over here, something with you. And here's Amazon. They hire a middleman who will then decide, oh yeah, like you know, either that's totally okay. No one messed up here or, oh yeah, you were injured by a decision that this medical person made. We are going to decide kind of how to handle that for you. And you have, you're bound by it, right? You can't go out around it and say, Hey, I'd actually rather, you know, go through a different means, maybe, uh, you know, sue people, uh, something like that. We like to do that in healthcare anyway can't do that unless you opt out within 30 days of signing this contract. Okay. Unless you opt out of arbitration, you are waiving your right to trial or to participate as a plaintiff. A plaintiff is someone making accusations or class member in any reported class action or representative proceeding. If you wish to opt out of arbitration, following the opt out procedure specified in section 12, you have to do that within 30 days of signing this contract. And 
I mean, by all means, have your own. If you're like a legal person looking at this, you can look at it and decide maybe you think mediation or like an arbitrator would be a better fit for you. I am not a lawyer. I cannot tell you that. I feel uncomfy as a primary care provider when it says you cannot go around this, like you can't find your own lawyer. You have no real means to get around this system if something goes wrong. Right. I think, I mean, and this can lead into a whole conversation about like how much we're like very lawsuit happy here. Uh, it's because, and a lot of it's just because it's healthcare is such a business and the way we deal with business things is to sue people. Uh, I'm not like lawsuit happy in any way. When I was practicing as an NP, I was constantly petrified that people were going to come out of the woodwork and sue me. I don't know if that was a foundation, like a fear that I needed to have, or if it was something my school pounded into me, but having the option is helpful when needed, right? If someone really egregiously screws up, it feels like you could get stuck in a situation with this where you would have no recourse to then go and be able to get compensation for someone's mistake. Yeah. Mr. Midwife says, and who guess who hires the arbitrator? I'm pretty, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's Amazon, right? So the person who would be deciding who gets what type of payout and what the result is here would be Amazon. So just be sure that you look into how you can file that exemption. If this is something that you do go with and go from there. Also a good point that many terms of service require binding arbitration, but no one reads the fine print. True. Um, a lot of the times it's not for primary care though, at least in my experience. I mean, your primary care might have a stipulation like this. Usually things like hospitals or different clinics might have binding arbitration that says, Hey, you have to go through, you can't actually sue us. So read the fine print friends. <laughs> Moral of the story. Number one, meet the fine print. Okay. So that is my biggest thing that stood out to me. I was like, yikers. I don't love that. But what is this in general? So this is primary care offices basically that are popping up in several cities. These are the cities that they have, uh, right now we have, um, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Columbus, Connecticut is coming soon. The Dallas or the DC Metro area, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, Milwaukee is coming soon. New York, Orange County, California, Phoenix, Portland, Raleigh, Durham, San Diego, Seattle, Tacoma, San Francisco Bay area, and Tucson. That is what they have right now. And if you live in these areas, then you can go and receive medical care that is essentially looking like if you were to go through a traditional healthcare center, right? Scott lives um, in at one of those cities and they said one medical has clinics all over. Uh, I think they're going to be popping up everywhere. They are trying to enter the space where that is traditionally hogged right now by healthcare institutions, right? So you have your hospital and then they kind of have all their satellite clinics. I think they're trying to compete with them. You can use this technically if you don't live in one of those areas. However, you can't receive all the primary care services of it. So it's kind of useless. Don't use this. If you don't live in one of those areas, you can kind of use like an online urgent care type of thing. Cause they do telehealth as well with it. But in order to receive the primary care benefits, you obviously need to be going and being seen in person and being able to go get lab work because these facilities have lab work and they have areas where like you go in and someone is actually, you know, hands-on making sure everything's okay. They do pretty much at their centers. It seems like pretty comprehensive care. You can go for reproductive help. So you can go and get your pap smears. Like we were talking about yesterday, you would go in and get your lab work done and then have it evaluated. Uh, some of the ones in San Francisco, it looks like do prenatal care. It's just that one location right now. And it is, it looks like your pretty standard office. It is interesting to me. So these are kind of what they pride themselves on, right? It says, if you have a uh, membership, you will have 24 seven virtual care video messaging. So something to talk to people on off hours, online patient booking on demand video chat, uh, and in app prescription requests and renewal. So they're kind of offering you more of an app based integrated approach to this. And I think that's what they're trying to sell people on. I am wondering I have a lot of questions and we'll kind of get to them at the end of just kind of, I'd like to see how this would play out. I think that sounds very convenient. This all sounds very, very 
idealistic and convenient. And I don't know how it's going to play out in real life because they're going to at the end be bound at the end of the day by the same limitations that all other primary care offices have, which is time constraints and low reimbursement from insurance because they are going through insurance. So yesterday we had, I'll leave the video link down below if you want to watch it. Seriously, the weirdest timing ever. We talked about Amazon clinic, which is like you pay $30 and you can talk to someone about your pink eye, or you can get medication refills like one time for your blood pressure. And that was not, they did not leave in there. Like we don't do insurance for that. Okay. That's like a one-time chat thing. This is totally different. This does go through your insurance. Uh, it's also for children all the way through adults. So, uh, and older adults. So anyone, they do pediatrics, they do, um, through 65, they do, if you're over 65, they work with Medicare. They work with a lot, most insurance companies, like they have a whole list. You can go on their website and check it out depending on where you live. And that is interesting to me that if they're running through insurance, right? So you still have to pay your copay. You still have to pay up to your deductible. I e emailed them this morning and they verified. That was one of the things they verified for me. Because at first I was like, oh, it's $144 for the whole year. Are they going the concierge medicine route, right? And we have, I have a whole video too, where me and the panel uh, discussed concierge medicine and what that kind of looks like and pros and cons of it. Great model, just not very accessible to many people, but no, <laughs> that was not what they were like. No, 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 no. The fee is literally just to be able to come into these clinics and to have the on demand, like 24 hours of care, uh, the chat, you know, the, the more the app experience mm -hmm. you can fun fact, use this without the, uh, $144 a year subscription model, but you're, all the benefits of like why you would be using this kind of go away. Like you can't do, it takes away all the chat options. It takes away a lot of like the, you know, being able to book an appointment online, it looks like. So it really like takes it down to like the bare bones, which I'm not sure it would be worth it at that point. Um, but it is possible just in case you were curious or it looks like you can also apply to have that fee waived depending on your income level. So that's kind of like what it is and what we're looking at. I am, I'm very, um, intrigued. Here's a map in case you're a visual person of where these are in the country. Um, there's none by me. Otherwise I would totally probably go and creep on this and check it out and <laughs> just see what it's all about. Cause I'm very interested. I'm interested in their, like they seem to want to be like remaking it and being like, look, we're different. We are giving you, there's a chart somewhere here. Let me see if I can find it where they're really priding themselves on, you know, other primary care offices do it like this. Here's what makes us different. And they're saying, oh, we're more flexible. We're giving you, uh, you know, we're, we're making this a more holistic experience and you have our whole team and you're not going to wait in the office and you won't have wait times and you can do same day appointments. And I don't know if that's going to last because that's, you're kind of bound by insurance, right? So a lot of places have to have high, um, you have to see a lot of people an hour in order to meet your like to make the office functional. Right. So I worked in a small private practice, uh, as a nurse practitioner. And when I am telling you that it is primary care is not like the moneymaker in the healthcare world, they're not gouging you there. We would make $88 about for an appointment. And so if we were charging $88 for an appointment that would, we usually did half an hour appointments and you had to pay you, maybe you got two appointments an hour, right. In you know, if you're doing like, I want to be personal and, you know, give you the time you need, which is what they would probably need for this. You would probably need half an hour. You're making like all like $190 an hour and you have to pay a nurse practitioner or a physician or a PA. Those are the three, um, you, all three, you can be seen through, through these practices that takes out a good chunk, right? You're making anywhere from, oh gosh, 50 to $75 an hour. So there's half of it immediately gone. Then you have to pay the MAs. You're paying the rent. You're paying the biller and coder. So the money goes away wildly quickly in primary care because reimbursement from insurance companies is so low. Now compare that to a specialty clinic like orthopedics. 
they make a lot more money because where we make $88 and it took us half an hour to make it in primary care, orthopedic clinic meetings are like five to 10 minutes long and they make 300 to $400 in for that because reinsurance is like, oh yeah, well you're, you're worth way more. So I'm curious to see how this actually plays out as they grow and they build up a huge client base, right? Because how are they going to be able to maintain not having wait times in their waiting rooms? Cause that's one of the things they're claiming is, oh, we're not going to have wait times in the waiting room. And you know, this is all just going to be like perfect and roses and daisies. And I'm like, but how does that work when you have a practice filled with patients and then you still have to be able to see enough people, right? So that you're making money because you're a business and you need to be able to remain afloat. And I'm sure Amazon is not in this <laughs> out of altruism, right? I, they, they're trying, they're seeing that healthcare is one of the mark like industries that makes the most money. <laughs> and they're like, I would like a piece of a giant piece of that pie, please. So I'm interested to see how this plays out like in the long run and how long this seems like some ideal thing, because ultimately they're going to have to start to shorten appointment times in order to make it so that you can squeeze in as many things as possible. Because again, this isn't concierge medicine where you can set a higher price. They're going through insurance. And so insurance is the one who's saying, Hey, we're going to pay you this much. You can't really wiggle with that. So how do you make more money? You squeeze in more patients. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. If I, anyone ever goes to one of these and like sees it, please leave a comment below and let us know what the experience has been like. Other than that, I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's going to be a business going into the healthcare sphere, just like absolutely everything else. I do agree, Miss Melanated. I think it's going to end up like Kaiser, um, where Kaiser is a very much a managed care situation. So it's a huge healthcare system, lots of satellite clinics. They don't give providers, at least from people, my friends who have worked at those institutions and people I know who have been patients there. You don't have a ton of a, like autonomy in terms of how you decide to treat people. It's kind of like they come in with this, you give this, they say this, you do this, like very much, uh, commercialized healthcare where it's not super, uh, tailored to the individual. You're not taking outside inputs really. You're just kind of like, it's an algorithm and you're kind of like regurgitating it back. I do think that's how this is going to become. It's, Mildly, like one thing that I would love to see them do that I doubt they will do is provide services in areas that are low, that don't have primary care, right? Because one of the things you, I see in this and I'm like, oh, this could increase access that people could have to primary care. However, they are only in the major cities, right? The areas that this is existing, which I get it, they're making money. They don't want to go to the middle of nowhere where there are fewer people, um, that would be great <laughs> in my ideal world. I would love for them to go into more rural areas that are hugely underserved that literally do not have primary care providers. Uh, but that's not what they're doing. They're in there to, they're in the city centers where, you know, they're going to kind of try to come in and they're going to look all fresh and put on a nice face and be like, Hey, we're the new people in town and you can do this on your app and it's easy and it's convenient. So I don't really hate them for getting in the game and trying. I mean, I think it was only honestly a matter of time before different businesses other than healthcare businesses decided to enter the space, especially like I know little ones have, but like obviously Amazon's a big company because there's a lot of money to be made there. Right. And there's, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how it all plays out, but, um, it will, you know, if they're, they're providing a polished experience, um, I think, you know, I think it's interesting. It will be nice in the beginning, I think, especially having the app, like, and all of the features that they have, uh, I think it's just going to run its course and get just as garbage as everything else. Because, you know, when you have the caseload you need in order to support something like a primary care office, you have to just shove patients in the door like no other, literally to stay afloat because it's reimbursed so poorly from insurance. So one thing, you know, I don't know how we change insurance reimbursement and to get insurance to start caring about the way we reimburse who in healthcare, right? We, we pay the people who are at the, uh, crisis level a lot. And they, and not saying they don't deserve to be paid well, but 
a huge thing that would change healthcare in general in our country right now would be to reimburse primary care a lot more. So you could see less people, you could afford to see less people, and you could actually take the time to have conversations with patients like there, I think like this company is trying to do initially, uh, have those conversations and keep people from needing to get to the specialists so much who are, you know, already so expensive, less people in the ER, all of that, all of that and all of that. So <laughs> yes, I am young and still have hope. <laughs> I don't have a lot, but you know, I was trying, uh, M says they're opening it up in a very upscale community by me. That's the vibe I get from this is that they are going for people who want to have a more, uh, want the concierge experience, but don't quite have concierge money. Right. So they can go in through this. They can still use their insurance. It's basically just another hospital system. I think it's only a matter of time before Amazon honestly opens up hospitals right now. They are contracting out with hospitals. So if you need a specialist provider, you would go to someone in one of the hospital systems. They said they have a good referral network, so they would be able to literally act in any way you need as primary care. They will, uh, you know, they can diagnose you with things they can, uh, do all of your preventative care. They will order your lab testing. They'll, uh, partner with radiology places. If you need x-rays or you like your DEXA scan, they have their own referral network. So they will refer you to other practices within the community because this is just primary care right now and coordinate with like hospitals and everything like that. I don't know if they would have like admitting privileges. I would assume no. So you can't, you know, be direct admitted into the hospital. That's something sometimes primary care can do, but they have drop-in lab services. Uh, so you can come by, you know, get your lab work done and go. And it's, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to, be interesting. You can use your FSH or your like HSA money to pay for your appointments. Um, you can pull up, I'm looking at like their Q and A's, their common Q and A's. Uh, how does it differ from other primary care practices? One medical aims to make healthcare easier to access and even make it enjoyable. I don't know. I don't know about that. While improving the health outcomes for people across every stage of life, one medical offers next same day and next day appointments or remote visits seamlessly paired with 24 seven on demand virtual care services through one medical mobile app, allowing members to seek care when and where it's convenient for them. Yeah. So just kind of playing into like, this is going to be so convenient and wonderful for you. Uh, one medical is designed to better serve the needs of its patients and providers, including thorough and thoughtfully designed welcoming offices in the U S appointments that start on time. Your appointments start on time until you need to cram so many people in, right. That everything, cause one backs up five minutes, the next one backs up five minutes. Now you're 10 minutes behind and that's just like snowballs. And then we get where we are. I'm sure we've all waited an appointment. I'm sure we've all waited for appointments. More appointment time with providers. Again, that is not sustainable if you are not getting reimbursed well, which they don't have in time, like they don't have control over. And the $144 is not that you pay in a membership fee. Like that's not enough. That's covering their costs of probably like running the app and hiring the people to monitor that chat 24 seven and do all of that. That $144 is not enough to like supplement your appointment so that someone could have more time with you more than like 15 minutes. Right. And onsite labs, um, they are, they're doing, um, everyday health visits, care on it, care ma management, pediatric and mental health service in a number growing number of locations. Yeah. And 24 seven care on the app. Um, <laughs> Scott said extra benefits for Amazon prime members. If you use, so now there is Amazon RX. So there's a pharmacy, Amazon pharmacy, which has apparently existed for a little while. And you do get a discount if you are a prime member on prescriptions, especially if you use like a, their, uh, you like a subscription service for pharmacy stuff you get a discount. So you don't get a discount on this if you're a prime member, but you do get a discount on, on your pharmacy. So that, that is certainly, it's just interesting. It's interesting the way that the world, the world is going. Here we are. Um, let me see. They talk about this here. Here's the letter from, let's hop over here. 
Uh, here's the letter in case you're curious. I'm sure it popped up on all of your Amazon things this morning. Um, (laughs) I thought this is funny. So this was the Amazon welcomes one medical. So this is the letter from Amazon CEO, dear customers today, getting great health care is often too difficult and inconvenient. Typically, this reminds me of one of those commercials where it's like all in black and white, right? And everything is like so challenging. They're like, I've never tried to use this. Using a spoon is so hard. (laughs) And they show you all the people who are like falling over trying to use a spoon. That's this. Not that healthcare is not impossible to navigate because it is, but you know, typically you have to find a doctor make an appointment a few weeks in advance. It's really months in advance. Let's be honest and drive 15 to 20 minutes or longer to get to the doctor's office. When you get there, you wait in the reception area for a while. You get called by a nurse. It's actually an MA into an exam room. You wait another 10 to 15 minutes or so and eventually see a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a PA. Uh, I really wish they let me proofread this before they published it. This is embarrassing for them for only a few minutes who often then just prescribes the medication. Finally, you drive 20 minutes or more to the pharmacy and wait for the medication to be ready. If you're at Target, friend, you're not waiting, you're shopping. (laughs) Have your meds filled to Target. All while you or a loved one you are caring for aren't feeling well. It's a lot of work. And let's face it, the system isn't working for customers or clinicians. Now there I agree. It's it's not it's not working at all. At Amazon, now the commercial has changed, right? And we have like upbeat music and the color is back. At Amazon, we're trying to improve the healthcare experience for customers. We started by building Amazon Pharmacy a bro- with a broad selection of medications sent to you with reliable, free delivery. We then added RX Pass, a new prime benefit from Amazon Pharmacy just for Scott with $5 a month. Let's prime benefit get as many medications as they need from a list of 60 medications frequently used to treat many common conditions. And shipping is free. Uh, a lot of these medicines are on the, like, that's great. Uh, but before you start thinking that this is like wildly altruistic, a lot of these are on like the $5 and under list, uh, but still five bucks a month. If you qualify, that's great. Okay. That's, that's absolutely great. Yes. Dog wagging tail here. It's perfect. That's the vibe we want. Okay. We want the little, yes, spot on. Well done. Um, we also recently launched Amazon clinic that Liz covered yesterday before she gave us this idea to launch this new product today, which offers a convenient, personalized and affordable way to get medical advice and treatment for over 20 conditions like migraines, allergies, sinusitis, and more like eyelashes friends eyelashes. Remember simply by messaging a clinician, no appointment needed or travel. And today now the music's like swelling. We're very excited. There might be confetti in the background. We're excited to announce that one medical has joined Amazon and our mission to make it dramatically easier for customers to get what they need to stay healthy and that we can get lots more money where, um, I'm sure that was written there somewhere. Um, with one medical customers can connect with clinicians 24 seven via video chat or messaging. If that's most convenient, our customers can choose to make an appointment the same day or within days to the same day or within days, you know, that's them covering their butt. It might be the same day, but it might also be many days. We don't know within days to visit one of the one medical, one medical's offices in U S cities. If you need a specialist, one medical works closely with lots. That's very technical term. Oh yeah. We work with lots of hospital systems. (laughs) You see that in a marketing meeting, they're like, what should we put here? How many uh, systems do we work with? I don't know. Lots Gary, just put lots. Okay. We work with lots of places. Don't even worry about it. If you need um, a specialist, you're fine. One Medical works with most insurance providers. (laughs) Again, (laughs) good describers. And while you can get your prescription filled anywhere that's convenient for you, you can also choose to have it delivered to your door by Amazon Pharmacy. This is how primary care should work. Good for you, Amazon. Good for you. For a limited time to celebrate One Medical joining Amazon, you can now join One Medical with a discount annual membership of $144, the equivalent of $12 per month. But wait, there's more. We're just at the beginning of what's possible. I knew it. Customers tell us there is a need to radically improve the healthcare experience, and we think we can help. My dude, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but if you're working within our current reimbursement structure within insurance, 
Andy Jassy, I have bad news. <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay. And Amazon together with one medical, we are determined to help make it easy for you to get the care and the medication and the products and services. <laughs> I feel like with that sentence, they just went and they were like, what do, what do people need in primary care? Like, uh, what do healthcare people need? And they're like, uh, medicine. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. More care. Okay. What else? Um, I don't know other products and services. Great. Just write that. <laughs> We'll give you whatever you need to get satisfied, be satisfied and stay healthy. Wishing you good health, Andy Jazzy. Well, wasn't that interesting? <laughs> Grassy Knoll. Yes. This was the vibe at the end. We saw the woman, her hair's like flowing behind her. And she's like, my life was so hard before I learned how to use spoons. And now I know how to use spoons and I have Amazon health. <laughs> my life is great. <laughs> My life is great. Also, this is an excellent point. Um, one medical did not join Amazon as Andy so kindly put it in the beginning. Uh, they were a bought for $3.9 billion. <laughs> That's a nice little caveat. Uh, yeah. Today we're excited to announce one medical has joined Amazon. Today we're excited to announce that we paid $3.9 billion, which lets you know, how much money we think we're going to make off of you if we were willing to invest 3.9 billion. <laughs> wow. So, so that's what we've got here, friends. That is a thing now. And I, it's going to be interesting to watch it, uh, you know, do well. I think it will initially do well, right? There's a low patient base. You don't have as many people in the system. You can spend more time with people, but uh, they need to repay that 3.9 billion. So if you don't think, my dudes, if you don't think they're going to be turning and burning and churning all these people right through these offices, just like yours already does, you're wrong because the problem is not the healthcare offices because shockingly, I know I rail against like administration of healthcare places, but most healthcare offices really do like they want to help you like the people within them, not the people in the high up, you know, they all want to just like rake in as much money as possible, but primary care is not where that's happening. Right. We talk a lot about hospitals, like raking in all the cash and blah, blah, blah. Having worked within this system for a long time, I promise you it's not the primary care offices that are making the money. So I really hope what's his name, Andy, I mean, Andy probably knows that, right? Uh, you really needed Andy to go acquire hospitals because they get paid, you know, you get paid a lot more by insurance companies when you're trying to die versus in the very beginning when you're in primary care. So you kind of bought the wrong end of the spectrum. You bought primary care and you probably wanted tertiary. That's a bigger return on investment or specialty clinics, but that's again, harder. So Andy, you did try way to go. Good luck. Uh, I think it's going to go downhill eventually. And I'll enjoy commenting on it, but that's happening now. You can go to Amazon and get all of your care. I hope that they also give you your packages, right? It would make sense to me that while you were waiting, they would know that you are there through, I don't know, their AI knowledge. And if I'm waiting for, I don't know, right now I'm waiting for seeds, like flower seeds to get delivered. They should show up to my appointment, right? Kind of like an Amazon locker. I would imagine that they would also do that. So if they don't, very disappointed. Uh, do you think we'll get a faster appointment with Amazon? Do you think you get a faster appointment with Amazon prime? I mean, I hope so. I would assume my medicine should get here quicker, right? I mean, it should, it should. Yes. <laughs> Lynn attention for the next 30 minutes. We will have a blue light special on uh, appendectomies <laughs> step right up <laughs> flash sale prime day. Come get your appendix out. Cause why not? Adrian says, I wonder if Amazon will treat these providers and healthcare workers like they treat their warehouse employees. Yeah. Let's look no further. Uh, they're not a great employer <laughs> In case you haven't heard. They are not kind that great to their employees. Uh, yeah, I pretty much, it's going to be a, <laughs> a conveyor belt of humans. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Can you drop off? This is an excellent question. This would maybe make me consider joining this. Can you drop off Amazon returns at a one medical clinic? Because if so, I might, did you also know, I don't know if this happens near you. If you have a Kohl's, we no longer have a Kohl's by where we live, but we used to, you can just walk your stuff into Kohl's and like take it to the returns department. And for some reason, at least this was how it was like a year ago, 
you can just like return your stuff to Kohl's and you can be like, this is for Amazon and they will like package it and ship it. And you don't even have to wrap it up. Like you just bring it and they deal with it. So that's a fun fact. Uh, someone let me know if that's still a deal, but if you could return stuff at your appointment, we might be onto something. We very much might be onto something. Okay. Yeah. Kohl's USPS, UPS and whole foods by me. There you go. So much easier. That changed my life because returning things like boxing things up and having to return them is like my literal nightmare. Uh, so then I just have like in the back of my closet, there's just like this weird area with all this stuff that I never returned, but I won't throw away. Cause then I feel like I'm wasting money, even though the return window is years ago. <laughs> why is this here? Uh, so that did, that's what happens when I no longer live by Kohl's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we have that. Um, and you also don't have to apparently box them up for UPS and USPS. Oh, but you do have to box them up for UPS and USPS. Okay. So Kohl's is the only one who will just like take and maybe whole foods where you're just like, here you go, please mail this back for me. Uh, and hopefully at these clinics, you can just also show up, you know, with your, random toy for your child that never the car that wouldn't drive because the wheels on the left-hand side didn't want to work and they were devastated on their birthday nine months ago. You can bring that in and be like, by the way, I'm broken. So is this, <laughs> please, please. Here you go. Um, so yeah, that's, that's happening. Adrian envisions an Amazon pharmacy truck running around a with controlled substances for delivery. That's interesting. Now that we've said the idea, they'll probably come out with it tomorrow. Uh, because yeah, how are they going? They can't mail controlled substances to your house. So you would have to have some kind of exchange like that. I'm wondering if in these areas, here's my next idea that I'm telling them about that they'll probably steal and implement. I'm wondering if they'll have almost like house call type of things where they will, uh, have a little, like have in their van where they'll run out and like, you can pay more and they'll come and draw labs at your house or they will come and someone will actually come and do like, you know, you could get your blood pressure checked. You could, or if someone needs to come and like, look at you almost like house calls. I'm wondering if they'll like for a lot more money, if they'll start doing something like that. Interesting. Interesting thoughts things that they might be doing. Uh, don't let the big elephant steal your idea, Adrian. Hey, Adrian, you've got to keep these ideas quiet. You have to start the business and then sell it to Amazon. Okay. Be like, Andy, Andy, I've got some ideas for you. I've got your solutions. Home IV treatment for the hangover. Yeah. When is Amazon going to hop on the IV therapy <laughs> trend? I don't think they're above that. Okay. I don't think they're above that. Uh, also yeah, Chad, uh, house calls are coming back many jobs for that right now. Yeah. People are, um, I think insurance is changing how they are. You can now get like reimbursed more for things like that. The one thing that did come out of the pandemic was a lot more flexibility in what you're able to do. And some, I know some of my friends who work in primary care are starting to do more like house call type things. And you can actually get like reimbursed for it with an addition of like, it was a house call component, as long as you can prove that the person is housebound or had a barrier to being able to come in. And then you can be like paid more for it. So it would make sense. So that's interesting. It is interesting. Um, uh, once upon a time, someone delivered milk to your door, DoorDash and Instacart are so retro. <laughs> now you can have all sorts of other things delivered to your door. <laughs> oh, there are the drones. Oh my gosh. What if, could you train robots to like, <laughs> I mean, like draw blood, like right way with like a super simple, like vein puncture. It like sticks out its little arm. You know, if you want to get like your A1C checked or whatever, and you like just do a finger prick, this drone comes to your front porch and sticks out its little arm. <laughs> and it's like, please put finger. It's like, boop, and it like stabs you. And then it like folds itself back in and then just like flies away. And then you get an app notification. It's like, Hey, by the way, your blood sugar's this wild. Absolutely wild. Uh, I believe baby cake says, I believe they have Amazon home where an, uh, APN comes to your house for Amazon employees. They're listening to us. They know what we're doing. <laughs> Would that be like, if you have insurance through them? Interesting. Um, put your, <laughs> put your finger in the hole for a glucose check. It's not what those holes are for. Okay. No. <laughs> um, 
the Amazon delivery robots will probably be delivering our meds and our supplies. Med supplies is huge money. I think this is also very much next home health type of stuff like medical equipment, durable medical equipment, uh, is a huge, huge industry and they already have the warehousing for it. I'm sure they're going to start getting into durable medical equipment that would be delivered to your door. That is a huge barrier in primary care is actually getting patients the supplies that they need, right? Because you can't just go to like CVS to pick a lot of this stuff up, especially if you want it covered by insurance. So I think, yeah, Adrian, you really are like brightening their business plan. You should probably be quiet, <laughs> go, go like formulate it and then sell it to them. Okay. You got to go sell it to them. Uh, a pap smear at home. How convenient. I cannot tell you the number of times doing telehealth with my patients, the number of times that I was like, okay, we need to either like, I need to see you so we can do like a pelvic exam, even if like, not for a pap smear, but just like, oh, I have a yeast infection. And they're, they're like, can we do it over telehealth? I'm like, uh, a pelvic exam? <laughs> no, 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 this, this not that kind of webcam, my dude, please let's not. I'm like, how would that? They're like, I'm sure I can figure something out. I'm like, let's, let's not. <laughs> let's just, let's just not. So maybe coming one day, like, I don't even know how they would send you a speculum. Everyone probably has like a light at this point <laughs> for like this is all their TikTok type stuff. They're like, here we go. We'll just rig this. I mean, an eye speculum, <laughs> but for real, I, I could see that a new iPhone accessory, like your ear, right? They have, if you're real bougie, you can get a, uh, something to hook up to your phone. And it uses your phone somehow to like look in the ear so that if you were doing telehealth and you were really rich, uh, you could have your healthcare provider look in your kid's ear if you had like gobs of money and could afford something like that. So that would be interesting. Um, maybe who, who knows what orifice is? <laughs> maybe Scott, that can be your business proposition. <laughs> Hi, I would like to invent a bunch of probes or all sorts of different primary care, you know, things that we need to keep checking up on. And, uh, cameras, it'll just Bluetooth over. It's fine. Everything's great. <laughs> oh, Scott, there's your, um, your capstone project for a grad school is that <laughs> how to make pelvic exams and pap smears, uh, able to be done over telehealth. Okay. I know that's your favorite topic and you'll love it. It'll be really great. <laughs> it'll be great. If anyone's going to find a way, yes, Sophia, if anyone's going to find a way of how to incorporate, have telehealth do everything, it is going, <laughs> it's going to be Amazon. They're going to be like, it's fine. We, we got this figured out. We've got it. Um, we can do this, uh, <laughs> gobs of money for home pap smears. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, Amazon might hire professionals fee for service soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, Matt, it was an impromptu live because I literally could not handle it. Uh, my husband sent me this this morning. He's like, look, <laughs> he's like, remember yesterday when you were talking about them starting primary care, he like sent it to me and I was like, no, this, did I miss this in my looking everything over yesterday? He was like, no, like this came out today. And I was like, this needs to be discussed. <laughs> Drop everything. Okay. <laughs> Drop it all. <laughs> we have to have a conversation about this. Also, I thought it would be, you know, if something new comes out, I was like, maybe people will Google it and then I can give them the summary. But mostly I wanted them to hear about the fact that they needed to opt out of the arbitration agreement because no, no, we don't, we don't like that. And on at some point, um, We'll have a conversation. I don't know if on this Friday or whatever, I think this Friday for the live, like the group panel fanny pack live, uh, is going to be on Adrian's channel. And so I will link all of that on the day, like when we have it more set up. Uh, and so I don't know if that's what we're talking about on Friday is maybe like what arbitration clauses in general disclosures are for when you go to a healthcare provider. Uh, like if you go to the hospital, they make you sign all sorts of things that if you really read it, you're like, oh, <laughs> this is sketchy AF and I am not sure. We'll talk about that. If not, we'll talk about it at some point. Um, there's all sorts of interesting things they make you sign that you don't have to sign and you will still 
get care. You just don't have to sign it. Right. So we shall see, uh, Amazon, Miss Melanie said Amazon already has a durable medical equipment and they'll do bill directly to insurance. I did not know that. That is fascinating. And that is actually very convenient. I, I approve. I'm Liz and I approve of this action. <laughs> Way to go, Amazon. So that's very good to know if you guys uh, are working in the sphere of needing to hook patients up with medical equipment. That's things like home oxygen tanks. Um, you know, if you need a walker, if you need crutches, if you need, oh gosh, anything that you would need that's medical equipment that would be at home. Uh, I wonder if that would work for the same thing for, uh, like splints. And, you know, if you're ordering boots for people for, you know, if they like break their foot, um, things like that. I wonder if that, uh, I wonder if that would be covered under that. Uh, Adrian says, we're definitely in the midst of a healthcare transformation and ownership by international hedge funds and multi-tier access systems is about volume, not quantity. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. This is absolutely not an altruistic move by Amazon. This is, they saw, wow, healthcare companies make gobs of money. I like to make gobs and gobs of money. So let's just, you know, spend a measly 6.3 billion and, uh, I'll just buy that company and we'll run it. Uh, so we'll see. CVS owns Aetna and controls the home health pharmacy and DME med equipment. Uh, so this would be like Amazon's competitor, I bet. So um, CVS, so CVS owns Aetna. Okay, so Aetna is a huge insurance company and they control a lot of the medical equipment. Maybe that's why it's impossible to get. <laughs> I just feel like I spent a lot of time arguing with durable medical equipment. <laughs> people being like, my patient just needs an oxygen tank. Okay. How is this, this difficult? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I did see the opt out short a couple hours ago. Good. I'm glad it showed it to someone. And YouTube told me that I needed to make shorts. So I'm like, I don't want to, I'm not good at saying things in under 60 seconds, but I made one. I made two actually this week. Very proud of myself. Go social media. Um, but yeah, I hate that everything's going to short form video as it's taken me 46 minutes to say what I needed to say here. Clearly, I'm not a short form video human. I also like listening to video, like people just talking on YouTube videos like I like having them in the background. I actually don't consume that much TikTok or anything because it requires too much scrolling. I just like to set somebody on and like, hey, I'll listen to you ramble about that topic for an hour and a half. That sounds great while I go about and do my life. But that's probably just me. Um, Miss Melanated says the Amazon one, they know they have wheelchairs, raised toilets, walkers. That's really interesting. So cool. Um, let's look into that actually really quick. Let me, we're going on an adventure, friends. Amazon medical equipment. Bum, bada, bum, 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 bum. medical supplies and store. Oh, look. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. We appreciate you, Amazon, for doing this. We appreciate you. So they have all sorts of medical equipment, occupational and physical therapy type stuff, wound dressings, um, lab supplies, diagnostic and screens so like stethoscopes. That wouldn't really be for your patients, but like durable medical equipment. Let's go there. What is this? Interesting. I didn't know that existed. A comfort extender in case you need help wiping, which makes a lot of sense. Actually, I know it's like a, a, it's a brave thing I'm realizing now to be Googling while on live YouTube, but here we are. Didn't know that existed, but that actually makes a lot of sense. People would need that. A raised toilet, hugely popular for when you have like hip replacements, everything like that. Walkers. Um, compression socks, compression socks. A lot of people need that. Um, these neck things. I feel like they just got this from TikTok. This is on social media where everyone has these weird neck pillows, uh, nebulizer machines. $69 is actually a very good price for a nebulizer machine. Usually they're a lot more money than that. Uh, reacher grabber tool. Okay. So all of these things they have here. So this is interesting. An inflatable bathtub shower kit with air pillow, portable bathtub bedside. What? No one needs this. This looks like awful. Okay. This could be helpful for like having your hair washed, but the whole bed. No, it's just a bed bath. Could you imagine how like difficult this would be to inflate a 
bath on top of someone's bed, I would a thousand percent just like flood everything in this room. No bed bath. You can make bed baths very relaxing. Okay. And you don't need an inflatable pool. That's very interesting. Interesting. What is this? Adult bib. These things are the best for children. Never thought of having them for uh, adults. An easy cutter pill machine. All of these things. Okay. Interesting. So they have this in case you need it. I could spend a lot of time on that website, just looking through and being like, wow, <laughs> what is this? This is fascinating. A fauner toilet aid reaches comfort, extends your reach over 15 inches. That's great. It'll eject the toilet paper. Press the bottom spring to automatically eject the used toilet paper. Take a few. Pa okay. Let's see. Take a few paper or wet wipes and wrap them around the head of the toilet aid, press the ex excess paper where to go and then turn it over to the side without the card groove. And then afterwards you can dispense it. That's intriguing <laughs> things you didn't know you maybe needed to have for people until now, but I could see that being very, very handy dandy. Um, you can also go to Alibaba. Yes. If you, uh, have insurance, uh, don't have insurance and want it cheaper. Yes. Um, but that might take forever to get here. Right. Right. Um, let me see. Cream ornament paddles are important for the elderly. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. There we go. Um, uh, Adrian, uh, okay. We're chatting here. You guys, one of you email me and I will connect you. Or if you're both on you're both on discord. So you can probably chat there too. That might make it even easier. If you're a channel member, you get discord. Yay. We'll figure out other perks at some point when I come above water, <laughs> when my head comes above water and I'm like, Oh yeah, we can do other, other fun things. Um, some occupational health items are cheaper than medical supply stores. Yeah. I would imagine that that looked much more affordable than most medical supply stores. And if they go through your insurance, that's very convenient. I don't know how you would make it so that it went through your insurance, but that's a, a different rabbit hole for a different day. All right, friends. Um, well, this was exciting. We know now that this exists, leave us, us as if there's more than one of me, leave us, leave me your thoughts. I think overall, I mean, it's just, it's no different than anyone else getting in the game. I'm going to sort of evilly enjoy watching it fall apart and be like, um, well, you know, when we said we could get you in today or within days, uh, <laughs> we're more looking at the days, uh, now, now shocker. We're like weeks out. Um, there we are. Yes. Please do. If you, if this was helpful, tap the like button, do compressions an odd number of times. It's the best. Uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see, uh, <laughs> where this takes us. Uh, stay tuned for Adrian. We'll do the live on Adrian's channel tomorrow. So I'll send out a link for that. Uh, we just have to figure out all the, all the technical bits. So I am guiding Adrian in the technical bits, which we know is going to go horribly. <laughs> right? So this is not going to, if you don't see us on Friday, it's because Liz could not, it was the blind leading Adrian's actually very tech savvy, but it was the blind leading poor Adrian <laughs> who had no idea. I'm like, well, I have all my settings already set up and I just press go. So we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Thanks for being here. Um, go tell all your friends, uh, just, if you're going to do this, make sure to read the, read the boring bits. Okay. I don't normally read the boring bits, but we found them. We found them. I was like, this might be important. Go share it. Remember you, my friends, you are not alone. You can do all the hard things. You're more than enough. And all of that jazz. I will see you next time. Bye.